Why does AEW's women's division only get one televised match per episode? Are they really not that good? Well, I've decided to cover all of the women's matches, even on the dark episodes on YouTube. So this was on Dark Elevation, and it was Hikaru Shida, my favourite wrestler, versus Tyro Rusimov. And this match was quite entertaining. There was a butt to Hikaru Shida's face, but ultimately it didn't go too long. And with all these matches that Hikaru Shida wins, they mean nothing because she turns up on TV and loses. The women's division need more TV time. And saying that, Mia Shafir taking on Lilith Grimm was so quick, if you blinked you would probably miss her, even though there was some good mat wrestling in this. And there's something going on between Shafir, Nyla and Vicky, but we don't know because they don't get enough time. Next up was Athena. This was a straight squash match. I like the character that Athena's doing. It's aggressive, badass, and she also, after the match, didn't leave her opponent alone. She went in for seconds. Last match is Julia Hart versus Lever Bates. Julia Hart definitely suits this character. It's a lot better than the cheerleader she had. But basically, the entrance was longer than the match. I think one of the members of the House of Black should have accompanied Julia Hart to the ring. But Never mind, she won by submission. There was two women's matches on Dark this week. The first one was Emi Sakura versus Jada Stone. And as always, it was highly entertaining with Emi. She was doing, we will chop you, chops. And eventually when she got the win, she did her usual sitting on the lap of the referee. I just don't understand why this woman isn't on TV. Just... It baffles me. Next one was Kiera Hogan in her squash match against Lennox. Kiera did a drop kick. Her opponent went into the turnbuckle. Kiera then ran around the ring and drop kicked her opponent right in the face. Next, it was like a slam and a one, two, three. And that's how long it basically lasted. And this usually means Hogan has won. Therefore, she's going to lose on Dynamite. On Dynamite this week, we have two women's promos and one match. First is Jamie Hayter and Britt Baker. From my point of view, it seems like Britt Baker was leading this interview rather than Jamie Hayter, who actually is the world champ. And it doesn't really seem like AEW are building up any other female stars other than Britt Baker. I suppose she gets the ratings and that's why she's on TV. But if you don't put any other women on TV so they can become stars and get ratings, how are you supposed to progress your division? Next interview is Mrs. Moxley talking with Soraya and who's going to be her tag team partner. It looks like she's going to pick between Tony Storm and my favourite wrestler, Hikaru Shida. Soraya just basically ignores Hikaru Shida and picks Tony Storm, telling her that she's amazing and they've always gotten on well. And Shida, understandably, isn't too happy with this. So next week we might see Shida get blamed for Tony Storm being beat up backstage, or Shida might actually do it. But regardless, Shida will always be my favourite wrestler. But this might all be a distraction, so Mercedes Monet will appear on AEW Dynamite. Then we got our women's match. Red Velvet, Jade Cargill, Sky Blue and Hogan. Hogan and Sky Blue were doing some near falls and some really good wrestling. Then Jade was trying to tag in Red Velvet, but... Red Velvet wasn't happy because she didn't want to beat up Hogan. And then eventually, Red Velvet refused and jumped off the apron, leaving Jade Cargill to take the win on Rampage. But Jamie Hayter, Britt Baker 
versus the Renegade Twins, or the Renegades as they're known, on this episode, Robin and Charlotte Renegade. And they are my favourite tag team. We actually got to see what they could do. And to start off with, Charlotte and Robin were controlling most of the action. But as the match went on, Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter, who the crowd absolutely loved, took control of the match. And sadly for me, they beat my favourite tag team. In Ballad of Belts, we learn we're going to get a street fight between Willow, Ruby Soho versus Anna Jay and Ty Mello. Ty Mello so annoying. I don't know how she does it. Fantastic. And this is what I mean. The women actually getting the same opportunities as the men. Perhaps whoever wins this match, hopefully it will be Willow's team because she's fantastic. But maybe you could do a cage match or a last woman standing match with these four. But with that said, we get Jade versus Sky Blue. And I thought this was going to be a squash match, which took less than a minute. It wasn't. Sky Blue was fighting back, showing some really good moves. Then we got Jade Cargill distracted by Red Velvet, who stood at the top of the ramp, and we're wondering, is she still a baddie? Will she team up with Hogan, or even wrestle Jade for the title, and of course lose? Who will defeat Jade Cargill? But speaking of her, her athleticism is amazing. Especially with Sky Blue and the finisher, she just hoisted her up on her shoulders and then into her finishing move. Obviously Blue had something to do with this, helped her along with it. Outstanding! So why have we learned this week from the women's division? That they need the same amount of time and opportunities as the men do. Also, that Soraya can't remember Hakara Shida's name and probably couldn't even be bothered to. 